Hey, this is Cody Rawl with Tech for Psych interview series. Today I'm speaking with Jim Schwabel, a biomedical engineer that has started several companies, most recently of which Neuralex Diagnostics, which is developing the ability to help physicians analyze voice patterns in patients to diagnose everything from Alzheimer's to autism to PTSD, early stages of schizophrenia and more. I met Jim at the Psychiatry Innovation Lab where he actually won the grand prize. And he was nice enough to catch up with me after the event to speak about his experience. Hey, this is Cody Roll with Tech for Psych. Today I've got Jim Schwabel with Neurolex with me. And we just did an event called the Psychiatry Innovation Lab. It was awesome. Entrepreneurs, uh, psychiatrists, and mental health professionals all came together with ideas, innovative new ideas to improve mental health care. And Jim actually just won the yeah, event. I know, I'm so oh my God. I'm so happy right now. Um, his, and his startup is really interesting, which is why I wanted to have him uh, featured here on Tech for Psych. Because uh, if you look at what Jim's doing, he's really taking what's available in technology today and applying that to mental illness. And uh, he also is living the life. I mean, you yeah, are yeah. in the thick of it, uh, working with venture capitalists, starting companies, hiring help. And uh, I'm going to take a step out of the frame here and just let, let Jim talk about what he does and about his company. Yeah, so uh, I'm a biomedical engineer by training. Uh, I went to Georgia Tech. Um, got involved with neuroscience while well, I was a student there and research lab, all these other places. Uh, end up finding out that there's a lot of research out there, none of it's being commercialized, and I really wanted to do something about that and actually start companies around ideas that are really good ideas. Uh, researchers don't really have the business knowledge or background to do that. So I partnered with a neurosurgeon from Emory, Jordan Amadio, an investor to create a neuroscience fund, and we formed Neurolaunch. So right out of school, I started neuroscience companies with other people, helping them grow their companies, um, gave them funding, have mentored them. We have 11 companies in our portfolio. One thing I'm incredibly passionate about, which got me here today, is psychotic illness and mental illness. Uh, and you know, psychotic illness, for those who don't know what it is, uh, it's basically when people can't differentiate unreality from reality. Uh, they end up isolating themselves, they end up having a psychotic break, they go to a mental hospital. Um, usually these patients have never been affected by really any major disease before, and this changes their life completely. Uh, so they're in the hospital, they come out, and they basically have to be on medicines most of the rest of their lives to reduce their psychotic, psychotic thoughts uh, and, and live a normal life. And so one of the things that we built was instead of going to the doctor and getting a blood sample or a urine sample, at Neuralex, uh, we collect a sample of speech. And just from a speech profile, we can look at whether patients have conditions like a psychotic break or not so they can get treated early and prevent the hospitalization. Um, and so I was incredibly excited to come here to the Innovation Lab today, talk with a bunch of psychiatrists, get feedback in our device uh, and, and that we're building, our prototype. Um, got a lot of really cool new use cases. Cody's been awesome. And can you talk a little bit about what the device does? Because it, literally, it analyzes voice patterns from people. This is just cutting edge technology. It's even absurd the technology yeah to yeah that so at, at so point. so so we look not only at features in the voice so we'd ask a patient like you how was your day-to-day -day? Um, and we'd collect a sample of speech just from that patient uh, and we'd analyze that sample of speech and, and extract features like the frequency of your voice or the power of your voice profile as well as the transcribe that speech into words and actually look at the words being used to diagnose a disease state and just from that we can you know, predict whether or not somebody is psychotic or not, whether they have uh, you know, Alzheimer's or not, uh, whether they are likely to have Parkinson's or not, many disease conditions. Um, but we're very, very excited about the potential mental health because uh, we've validated that in a few studies. One of the ones for me that I'm excited about is, uh, you guys were talking about PTSD a little bit too, yeah, yeah, taking yeah. a look at that and perhaps soldiers coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan. We have a lot of people right now that are uh, recovering from the wars that we had. So I think that, um, and other Absolutely. cases of PTSD as well, taking a look at uh, the voice profile, Absolutely. especially if they're doing some sort of um, 
therapy where they were going through their experiences, telling their stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, I would see that as like a really good uh, method of determining if someone's got an acute uh, high adrenaline state that characterizes PTSD and really help with diagnosis for us. Absolutely. So one of my friends actually was at Grady and he talked to a lot of veterans and they came back from war and they suffered crazy traumatic experiences. And you know, my friend, friend came up to me, his name's Mo, and said, I know I did all these rotations at Grady, you know, I, lo I love what you're doing with your startup. It'd be awesome to apply this to PTSD. And what he was saying was that people who have uh, PTSD, when you ask them, you know, relay a story from war or, or whatever else back uh, in, in a voice profile, you could tr extract features from the waveform and measure stress. And that stress may measure the intensity of PTSD, maybe give more informative treatment from things like the frequency, uh, the, the speech rate, and some of the words being used that are more emotional words. So we think really we could transform uh, some of the way PTSD is diagnosed and treated and really give, give pa patients uh, the ability to, to really measure uh, their state and how to cope with it. And so we're really passionate about that as well and hope we can get some studies going through VA from soldiers and, and really help them. Jim, I asked um, Jordan this question earlier, but um, I wanted to ask you as well, what do you see us in the next 15 years in terms of where we're at with technology and what we're able to accomplish in terms of communication with the brain and understanding yeah. how it's actually allowing us to interact with the environment? I'm super interested in measuring intentionality. You know, every day we have all this data, we're glued to our phones. I think we're now almost connected uh, to phones to the point where our nervous sense system is extended into technology. And, you know, we think in our memory, you know, an email or whatever else, and that memory is actually stored as digital information in the cloud, such as email, and that's almost an extension of our minds. And I think that going forward, um, what I'm really passionate about is using that data, that extension of our minds for use in the medical context to measure the status and state of our mind. And I think, you know, out of all the data that's out there, you know, I've MRI images, everything else, I think speech, and text data just out there is the most prolific and you can do so much with that uh, and, and just diagnosing, treating patients, really giving patients help. Uh, but the state of technology, you know, I really think eventually we're gonna get to the point where just by thinking I can have an action done by some technological agent, maybe a parallel version of myself. Uh, you know, I would love to have a mirror of Jim as a computing architecture, have a, you know, a parallel version of myself that's sort of like an operating system and a computer give it tasks to do, so I'm sitting back and being more optimal. I think there's a lot of stuff like that I'm really interested to philosophically talk about. We're not there yet, but I think, I think our world's getting to the point where we can really offshore a lot of our mental tasks in this technology uh, and measure it, and, and, and as well as, you know, um, back it up uh, in that, that sort of way to restore, say, functionality if it was lost in a nervous system disease, for example. So I'm really excited about where the technology's going. Um, I see EEG genetic testing, uh, you know, pharmacology, uh, you know, what we're doing all merging into a new, a new system of data that when connected is going to unleash so much potential that I can't even imagine what we can do with it. So, It's a crazy awesome world we're living in. You really feel the energy at these conferences where you get these like-minded individuals coming together talking about technology and how we can use that to really further the potential of the the yeah. human species. I mean, that's really, I, I feel like that's what we're doing. We're really like pushing absolutely. the boundaries here. Absolutely. I think, I, think, I think with more technology integration, there's more existential risk as well. So if we're going in that direction, we need to think about the risks involved. Sure. So. Absolutely. And that will be, you know, that will be the debate as we move further in. But I, Jim, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Cody, it's been awesome, man. And congratulations yeah. on the win, for I'm so, sure. I'm so happy. And, He's uh, been working on this stuff, he was telling me, for at least six years. So yeah. it's, uh, it's very nice to see someone that's been working on something for so long and maintaining faith uh, yeah, so, in, so and belief in what yeah, you're yeah. doing so that you can get to a point like this where you really, um, stuff starts happening, you get feedback, you get uh, yeah. reassurance that what you're doing is changing the world and you can uh, continue on doing that. Absolutely. You should always do what you want to do. Don't let anyone stop you. My advice to everyone is always pursue your passion. You know, you might be in the middle of the desert, but if you're doing what you really love to do, people will come to you that are like-minded, like here, and I love this community that you're building. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this grow, and uh, I, want, I want to see it grow all throughout US, Europe, 
um, and, and interface with a bunch of other neurotech stuff, including you know stuff we do at Neurolaunch. Um, I'm excited. It's just really cool, really cool talking, and thanks for the opportunity. All right, Jim. Thanks so much for being on the show. If you guys have questions for Jim, uh, please leave them on the comments below on the YouTube video, and uh, we'll do our best to get back to all the questions. Uh, it's Cody Wall for Tech for, Tech for Psych. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks. Awesome. Hey, it's Cody Roll with Tech for Psych coming to you from the Potomac, Washington, D.C. waterfront. And what I've noticed in the past two years of doing this is that you, the viewer, really wants to get involved with neurotechnology, but you don't necessarily have means of doing so. Now, I'm going to tell you how you can do that in just a second, but first, I just want to thank you for being a part of this community. It's a group of people that are interested in uh, self-development by using principles in neuroscience and innovations in neurotechnology, and it's been a great ride so far. Now, let me tell you about the brain games. We here at Tech for Psych want to put on a competition in which mind athletes come together from around the country and compete in different cognitive domains to include meditation, using biofeedback, memorization, uh, control of robotic limbs and drones by using brain-computer interface and decision-making skills. Now the mind athletes that win each category are going to be recognized nationally, win prizes, and get to work with neurotechnology companies to help develop their products. In addition, mind athletes can agree to undergo brain scans and other studies in an effort to democratize their cognitive strategies for the population. Now, if you're interested in supporting the Brain Games or entering as a mind athlete, subscribe to the channel here and take a look at www.techpsych.com. Subscribe to the email list. We'll keep you updates on the Kickstarter campaign where we will consider certain donation amounts as automatic entry fees to be a mind athlete if you want to do so. Uh, again, subscribe to the channel. Take a look at the website. The more people that we have on board, the better that we're able to talk to academic institutions, financial backers, and neurotechnology companies to help make the Brain Games a reality. It's Cody Roll with Tech for Psych. Thanks so much for tuning in. Talk to you next time soon.